Jake. And here he is live, Kevin Spacey, playing Frank Underwood. Thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you for having me. So is he right there? Is Washington more exciting than Hollywood? I, look, for me, it's like performance art. <laughs> You know, I sometimes watch it. Actually, we can get done shooting on a day, and I'll come home and turn on the news, and I'll think, you know, our storylines are not that crazy. They're really not. With some exceptions. Again, I'm not going to give too much away from the second season. But it does seem like pre even President Obama has a little bit of Frank Underwood envy, the ruthlessly efficient Frank Underwood. I can imagine why he would. I mean, I, I've, I've thought, actually, over the last year, it must be really interesting for not just an American public, but people around the world to, to view a very effective Congress that gets things done. And so I, I can imagine he must feel, gosh, I, I wish we could move that quickly. How do you put the two together? I mean, clearly the show is striking a, a chord out there at a country at a time when the country hates Washington more than ever. Well, I, I, I've heard from lots of people, you know, that, that some people feel that 99% of the show is accurate and that the 1% that isn't is that you could never get an education bill passed. That <laughs> Forget about every other crime you see over the course of the show. <laughs> and, 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 you know, you've got all these members of Congress. I want to show a, a group of them uh, from nowthisnews.com who seem to have a little bit of Frank Underwood envy, too. You know, the bill's going to come up this Wednesday. I never make such big decisions so long after sunset and so far from dawn. It's still going to come up. I have no patience for useless things. Oh, he was about to tell me. Yeah, yeah. Kevin. McCarthy, McCarthy, who was the House Republican Whip. He's the House Republican Whip, who, who was really uh, very generous to me. I, I spent, I sort of shadowed him uh, in the Capitol a little bit um, to, to understand and learn what, it, what it's actually like to be the majority whip. But he actually said recently that, you know, if I could kill just one member of Congress. <laughs> I would never have to worry about another vote. I think that's pretty true. The example that would set. So what did you pick up from following him around? Uh, look, it, it's particularly interesting for him because there are so many new members of the Congress who were sort of brought in in the Tea Party and we're going to fight against Washington and we're not going to do it the usual way that it's very difficult to harangue 218 congressmen to vote a particular way you want them to vote. So I, I don't envy him the position. It's, it's not easy. But it was very, for me, Fascinating to go to a couple of whip meetings and actually see what the agenda is, what they're going to put out there, how they do it. Um, and so for me, it was very helpful to understand what it's actually like to try well, to whip. And the show does get all those little details of the setting and, and a lot of the conversation exactly right. But I wonder what you make of, um, you know, some people, some critics of the show look at it and say, as you point out, a lot of people think this is the way it must be. But one, uh, Marsha Angels, a, a doctor, says, blanket cynicism, talking about the show, gives the illusion of understanding, not really understanding what's going on. Well, I think that, you know, that we've also heard a lot of comparisons to, well, we're, we're the antithesis of what the West Wing was. Mm -hmm. West Wing was a very, um, you know, a, a, look a different kind Washington. of fantasy. Yeah, a different kind of fantasy. And that, you know, I think that w what I think is very interesting is, is even if you look now at the way that some real politicians are being reexamined, you know, Lyndon Johnson is a character that, that my character in, in House of Cards admires. You know, during his lifetime and certainly during his presidency, he took an enormous amount of criticism, certainly for his policies in Vietnam. But we also have to look at the fact that he passed three civil rights bills in a very short presidency. And yes, he was called ruthless and Machiavellian and SOB and a lot of things during the course of his life. But people are sort of re-examining people oh, who were true. willing to do whatever they and, had to and, do. And if he had the kind of coverage doing those, going through those ruthless tactics uh, that he would get today, going through them, he might not be able to get what he got done. Or even Abraham Lincoln. You know, you look at the film Lincoln, which showed him as a very effective politician, willing to give positions to very people in order to get votes for something he thought was more important and today that would probably be a scandal. Kevin Spacey, thank you very much. House of Cards is terrific. You can see every episode on Netflix right now and we'll be right back.